Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Maria and I'm going to show you step by step on how to use a clamp iron for beginners. I'm going to share all the tips and tricks, what to do, what not to do, so let's get right to it. The first thing we have to pay attention to is the way your hand is positioned on the iron. Your thumb should be right below the clamp and your index finger should be placed on it. That should be the only finger placed on it controlling the leverage and how much you open and close the clamp. For today, I'm going to show you how to create a classic curl effect. That is one of the easiest ways to curl your hair and I feel you guys will really understand it and be able to use these tools and skills right away. Okay, so now that we clarified that, I'm going to show you how to actually create the curl. The iron is off right now because I want to go in slow motion and really explain every step in detail. So. Now that we figured out how to position our hands on the iron, I'm going to open the clamp with my index finger facing in front of us. It should only be facing in front of us. I'm going to have a section of hair, place the iron in between, go as close to the root as I can, close the iron completely. My finger is let go, glide the hair down. Now I'm going to start to rotate it towards my hair. You could use two hands to hold the iron. And I'm going to semi-open it just enough to get the hair to glide through. Glide down. Curl it into my hair. Semi-open it again until we reach the ends of it. Then I'm going to reel it all the way in again. Hey guys, I hope you're still following. Now that the iron has sat on my hair for a couple seconds, I'm going to just slowly release it. And I'm going to semi-open the iron and release it. Okay? I feel like that was super simple. Let's do the real thing. I'm going to turn my iron on. I am using the GHD Classic Curl 1 and a quarter. It does not matter what size iron you're using. I'm just using a 1 and a quarter. I like to switch up my iron sizes, but it's all the same technique. I am going to be using today Good Behavior from the brand IGK. The reason why this is one of my favorite products is because it's so lightweight. I do have a naturally straight hair and it does tend to get weighed down or feel really oily. This one doesn't because it's an aerosol can it creates a lighter effect on my hair and not only that But you could use it on wet or dry hair. So it is a game changer. It's an anti-frizz heat protectant all in one So I highly recommend this product. It's not sponsored, but I just really love it <laughs> So I'm just gonna spray it freely throughout my hair Okay, so now that we applied our heat protectant, what we're going to do is section our hair. This is probably another key step in creating curls because if you have your hair just pinned up randomly, I guarantee you the curl pattern is going to be not consistent on both sides and just uneven. So I am going to show you exactly how I part my hair to create balanced curls on both sides. So make sure your hair is parted wherever you naturally part your hair. I'm going to bring my part all the way down to the nape of my hair and bring two sides forward. Now that we have all our hair to our sides, I'm going to subsection it into two. So like that. And I'm going to pin this one up. Especially when you're a beginner at this, sectioning will be your friend. I'm telling you right now. It just makes it so much easier to be able to see your work as well and what you're working with at the moment. Okay, so now that our hair is parted, let's get into the fun stuff, curling your hair. <laughs> so when I curl my hair, I actually like to start at the last piece of my section. So this way I could just toss it back and it doesn't get mixed with the rest of my hair. Okay, so remember, our placement of our finger is the thumb right below the clamp and our index finger steering us in the direction. So I'm going to open the clamp iron, remember it should be opening in front of you, it should be in front of you. I'm going to place it close to the root but not exactly there. I closed it shut, now I'm going to glide it down, start to rotate it towards my hair, semi open it just to glide the hair through, reel it in again, semi open it again just till it's just a few hairs sticking out, once it heats up for a second. I am going to unwind it. Gorgeous and a beautiful classic curl. And I'm just going to toss this piece back so it could fully cool. Do not brush any curl through. 
in the cooling process because that's going to cause your hair to drop so much quicker than it has to. And especially if your hair doesn't hold that long, this is a key tip. I feel like this is a super easy process. What do you guys think so far? Let me know in the comments below if you're finding this easy to follow. Also, let me know down below what iron are you guys using? What's your favorite iron to use and why do you like it? I'm using the GHD Classic Curl Iron right now and the reason why I really like this iron, it is a little bit pricey. I recently invested in the GHD Iron this year and the reason why is because it protects the integrity of your hair. Most irons out there, they have a temperature on it that's say 400 but in reality it keeps rising above that number and ghd irons stay at the healthy level of 350 which is the perfect zone to protect your hair from any heat damage i swear once you get the hang of this though you literally glide through this and it becomes such a quick process i could finish all my curls in literally five minutes just because I've been doing it for so long. The section you take does make a difference in the consistency of the curl. If you're thinking of taking a thicker section, then I would suggest doing that all around your hair. Don't take a thick section and then take a smaller section because the curls are not gonna be consistent and they're not gonna flow as nice as you think. We're going over to our left side. This is where it could get a little bit confusing, especially when you're a beginner. So when we were curling on our right side, we opened and rolled away from the face. It's pretty much the same thing on this side, but since you just got used to curling your hair away, going backwards on the right, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get used to the same rhythm on the other side or vice versa, whichever part you start on, it becomes a little bit more difficult to understand which way to turn away. A really good tip to know is when you're placing it in, you should not be rolling it into your face. You'll notice it feels uncomfortable and it honestly won't glide through. You should always be kind of turning it backwards and it will easily glide through. Especially when you're just starting out, it is really confusing and I totally understand that because when I first started curling my hair, I did not get it at all. Okay, so our bottom half of our hair is completely curled. And what we're gonna do is kind of set it with a little bit of hairspray. Moroccan oil hairspray, this is the extra stronghold. I'm just gonna spray the back. And I still did not brush the curls through. I want it to cool 100%. So I brought all my hair to the back of my head and I'm gonna take one section at a time down. So I'll do this half of my head first and then I'll move on to the other side. So I pretty much curl the same way. I like to start in the back first, just so I don't get confused with the rest of my hair and it keeps it nice and clean sections. I feel like a lot of you guys ask me, how do I create the curls before I style my hair on Instagram and TikTok? And this is the base of it, is learning how to curl your hair with a clamp iron. It makes such a difference. And you will notice my hair is kind of always curled or air wrapped in all my videos. And this is a signature way that I style my hair for all of my Instagram and TikTok videos. This is another key part. We have reached the front of our hair this is where my curtain bangs are and how you curl these really change the way your curls look you could either make them very tight or maybe not curled high enough or, or it's too low of a curl so the best way to curl curtain bangs is to start midway close it completely and turn i'm not going all the way to my root for this one and now the way you untwist it makes a huge difference as well so I actually slide it down rather than just releasing it because it blends with the rest of my hair and you can't even tell that a curtain bang is even there. I honestly wasn't even planning on creating a YouTube video right now, but I freshly blew out my hair and I was like, I need to curl it for some videos on Instagram and TikTok. And this would be an awesome way to show how I create my curls on a YouTube video. And I know a lot of you guys ask me for it, so I am so excited. Also, let me know if you have any other video ideas that you guys want me to do or you really want to see that I haven't explained as in depth on my Instagram or TikTok. I really wish I could create longer videos on Instagram and TikTok. I know a lot of you guys really want that, 
but the reason why is because I can't go that much in depth and I care so much about the detail of the video and how to actually create it the correct way that I don't want to spend too much time on that. I'd rather just show, show a style and then keep it separate from a YouTube video that I could actually go in depth with you guys and explain exactly how to do it step by step. Okay, so we just reached the front piece of our right side. I'm going to show you again how I curl my curtain bangs. I start midway, close the clamp, start to slide it all the way down, reel it in, and it's all how you untwist it. So I just slide it through the end. So this way it molds to my hair, and it looks really seamless. Okay, so I'm going to spray it one more time. Wait around 10 to 30 minutes for your hair to fully cool down and for it to last you all day because once it's fully cooled and you brush your hair through, it will last a whole lot longer rather than just brushing it through right when you curled it. So I'll be back in around 10-15 minutes. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes and I'm going to brush out my hair with a wide tooth comb. I've been really loving the effect it gives when you brush it out with a wide tooth comb rather than your fingers. I'm just going to spray a little bit of the Beach Club Texture Spray from IGK. This gives so much grit to your hair and volume. I'm just going to show you real quick the difference it makes from both sides from using a little bit of texture spray. Honestly, it gives a lot more hold than hairspray. The reason why is because it's not easily combed out of your hair. Hairspray, on the other hand, you could easily just comb it out of your hair and you won't see the effects of it any longer. But texture spray really sticks to the hair, which is amazing, especially if you like volume. Holy, look at the difference it makes. Just adding some texture spray, it like lifts my bangs, it gives it that swoopy effect, and it gives it that big body curl that we are looking for. So if you don't have a texture spray, I definitely recommend it. This one is one of my favorites, but you could use any texture spray. And if you like even more volume, I would suggest adding a little bit of dry shampoo towards the roots. The more you massage it and work it through, the bigger your hair gets. Especially if you go a couple days without washing your hair, it makes such a difference. Since my hair is freshly clean today, I used a little bit more product than I usually do just to give it that voluminous effect because else it will just stay flat and not move at all. What do you guys think? I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it easy to follow. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.